I built this last year on 80 meter pole, but Tom was down yesterday and helped me rebuild it onto a 12 meter pole. So Tom M0 RMY uh, came down a couple of days ago and we put up a 12 meter pole with the art, I called it a Starduster, but it's a tri-band dipole, I suppose, using shared legs, uh, shared raised radials. There we are. But very high up for 15, 12 and 10, because you've got the three elements, okay? Now I built this literally what, exactly one year ago on an 18 meter pole. Um, but I had got a couple of B grade 12 meter poles knocking around. So I thought I would uh, build it on, on that. So what we've got is a 15 meter linear loaded. So it goes up and down a bit. Then we've got 12 and 10 quarter waves sharing these three um, elevated radials, all right, the three together. So if you think about it, 10 meters is slightly offset in one direction. So the legs are a bit too long, but the element is a bit too short. And overall, we get a match on 28.4 or whatever else. Same with 12 meters, but roughly on 12 meters, the legs are about the right size. So we're exactly center loading with the coax there. And on 15 meters, the legs are a bit too short. But all we do, if we've got the radials are too short, all we do is make the element a little bit longer. Okay, so if you think about a dipole, instead of feeding it right in the middle, we're just off center feeding it very slightly, not a lot. The impedance rises the further you go to the end. When you get to the very end, we end up with an end fed, right? But we're just a little bit over there. And the radials, they're made from um, a Kevlar cord wire called DX50, because that's got a braking strain, you see, for well, I think it was tested to 135 kilos. So I've got little insulators at the end of that Kevlar wire, down to some power cord, so we can apply a little bit of tension if we want to. I just hammered a piece of scaffold tube in the ground yesterday so the base wouldn't move. But then when we tilted it over, I could hear it just about to explode because there was no tolerance. So today's job is to put a hinge at the bottom so this thing can tilt over because I need to change 15 meters, which is currently resonant at 20 point seven something well, on a hinge but i'm gonna have to sink those bolts into the ground i reckon i can just lift this up actually and move it yeah i can seems really locked I don't have any grease with me, but I've got my Vaseline, kids. Don't think that one will fit. Uh, I'll just do up that bottom one. Enough. I mean, if I like it here, we will, uh, you know, maybe put something here and put better poles in, better guys, better roping, things like that. That'll be enough. So just to get it up and down without the bloody thing falling apart. It's for my benefit, really. Yeah, well, not that tiny. There's a piece. Perfect. This is not self-supporting, remember. This is just to stop the base kicking out, you know. I know what you're going to say, Callum. Every time you put something temporary up, it becomes permanent. And I, I kind of agree with that. But I, this is temporary because I've used one of my um, heavy guy stakes and I don't want to split them up so the reason for the banana shape is because 15 meters needs to 
<laughs> what I discovered last time, put three elements, you know, the size of a pencil, all getting among, amongst each other. So I used 15 to bend it over and that gave a little bit of tension for the other elements. I've got to say, there's a massive plane coming. Let's have a look, see if we can identify it. I think that's a 380. I couldn't quite see it because I was looking at the camera. It's got a deeper base than the other four engine aircraft that flies in here. That's huge, that thing is. Uh, right, we're all cockeyed now. So I was gonna say, yeah, the banana. So the reason for the banana is that I intentionally pull it over so that 12 and, 15, uh, 12 and 10 are kind of out the way of 15 and it just, it looks a bit weird, but it works really well. I'm thinking of releasing it as a micro kit that you can buy but on SSBs, you can barely hear someone uh, to be able to have another couple of dB. It just, they, now you can hear them and they can hear you as well. It's looking extremely sorry for itself. I'm not quite sure if I've got enough slack to lift this up on top. Let's have a look. So to reiterate, it's just a quarter wave, okay, for 10, quarter wave for 12, and quarter wave for 15. I made a video about this, but we're sharing the radials on each. And we can share the radials because we're basically offsetting 10 and 15 by a little bit, so that uh, 12 is actually got the right size radials, but 15 and 10 are slightly too short or too long. All right, sort this out. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's 10, look. There's 12. And there's 15, which comes back on itself as a little... We call it linear loading. I don't know how else to... I mean, it's loaded on a linear fashion, so to me, that's linear loaded. Just a bit of a banana, not too much. Thing is, you get the height, and these things just work, you know, because you're getting up near VHF. Now we go back to the hinge and lift this thing up. Originally designed for an 18 meter pole, the whole sizes are different, so we got the super glue out and just kind of made it work. Because it's an old 12 meter pole, which you don't use anymore, and it, it's effectively scrap. So we kind of did super glue and tape and that sort of thing. And by the time we'd finished, I forgot to put a guy plate on it. So we just used um, an easy clamp and some loops for the paracord. And it's just working, okay? Signals are great. I've been on it on 15. I had a contact to 12. Mike Zero X-ray, X-ray Tango. Mike Zero X-ray, X-ray Tango, 59. Thanks, 59, good luck. Thanks, Papa X-ray Zero Fox Fox. Here's a challenge for you. Come up with a name for it. I might, I might make a little kit so people, if they've got a 12 meter pole, they could do this. In fact, you could have 15, 10, six, because it's high, six might be quite good fun. Just beware of the losses on the coax on six, that's all. Anyway, um, I wanted to get that up before we put the Yagi on the tower because I've got Jonathan coming up in a couple of weeks kind of time and I just wanted an alternative uh, so that if I'm on the signature 12.4, someone else can be on 12 meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, for instance, because we've got some band bars filters turning up, which means we'll be clean as a whistle for, for each station. Um, so the big tower, the Yagi, Mike's coming tomorrow, we'll start the build um, of a 20 meter Yagi monobander. It's a temporary solution whilst 
we think what we're, what I'm doing with this quad, okay? Because the multiband quad is away. It's a lot more head load. I want to add more guys to the tower. There's some adjustments I want to do. I'm fairly comfortable just with the Yagi up the top. The Monster, if you've been keeping up with the channel, uh, 30, 42 and a half feet it is, which is uh, 13 meters high, the huge tower. Um, I'll, I'll just tell you about that in a minute. And then we've got the four square around the outside. And you know, I mean, I am worried that uh, the four square and the tower might interact with each other, but we can always put more insulators at the base and things like that. I'm waiting for an eight to one pulley to turn up before that thing comes down any anymore. But tomorrow I start the homebrew Yagi project, which you can follow along with. And then once I'm really comfortable with the tower, we'll move up to the quad, all right? So that'll be a multi-band, two element cubicle quad from um, the 20 meters uh, all the way up to six. And then once I'm happy with the development of that, we'll get it made and uh, you'll be able to buy one if you want it. I'll warn you now though, it'll be big. <laughs> but in true Callum style, it'll work like a treat. All right, that's all I have time for you today. Have a jolly good day. Thanks for tuning in today. With the noise of the aircraft behind me, I don't really care. All the best. Bye for now and enjoy your radio, all right? Cheerio now.